Hello everyone, this is Murli from BI TechWorks. Today we are going to see something interesting in Power BI. We are going to see how to create time intelligence functions using DAX with direct query. And also we are going to see how to use a fiscal calendar as opposed to a regular calendar for comparisons. I have a basic setup here with a fact table containing the sales information and two calendars one regular and one fiscal i have joined these tables uh, using one to many relationships and the date columns in the tables now that we have the basic setup we will see how the year on year comparisons work using a regular calendar for this Let's create a table visualization containing, uh, let's say, a year and let's make it, don't summarize, we want the year numbers and we will pull in the sales. So we have the sales uh, here, so we'll pull in. So we have sales for 2018 and 2019 so now we will we will create a calculated column to hold the prior year information so let's create a new measure and call it sales prior year so calculate sum of sales and that is the expression for filter we will use uh, the same period prior year so we have a function called same period last year and the dates is the day date so here we are going to use uh, the day date from the regular calendar right so we got this so we're going to add this to the table right so now we have uh, 26 million for 2018, 92 million for 2019, and prior year sales shows 26 million, which is same as 2018. And for 2020, I don't have data, so for prior year 2019, it shows 92 million. So uh, this calculated measure now shows the sales from previous year. Let's create a new measure for calculating prior year sales using the fiscal calendar now. So ideally uh, it should work right because we are using the same uh, inbuilt function. But uh, let's see here. Uh, so again we create a new measure. Let's uh, name it sales prior year fiscal I'm going to use the same calculation calculate sum of sales and same period last year day date day date is fiscal this time right so now that we have created the measure let's put the table so we'll have sales we'll have sales prior year fiscal and we will have the fiscal year
Let's close our eyes. Great. So it's the same, right? It works. Right? It it looks it works, but I I'm not sure. So let's see. L let's add in the period now. So let's go back to the regular calendar and we have period SID. So when I add the period I can see the sales split by period. So here uh, 2019 period 9 6.3 million and prior year is 4.4 million which is 2018 period 9. So this is right. So the same way for 2019 period 10, 18 period 10, 11, 11, 12, 12. Perfect. So for regular calendar, even if you add a new hierarchy level, which is the period here, it still works. Let's see how it works for the fiscal calendar. So here is the fiscal period SID. I add it to here. Let's move it next to here. Here, hmm, see, so here we don't see the period 2019, period 9, rather we have 10, which is like 18 million, and you have prior year period 10, which is 13 million. But here, 10 is 9 million. So I'm guessing because it's 13 million, I'm guessing this period 9 and 10 got summed up approximate 13 million. So it doesn't seem to be working here, right? Um, let's see. I mean, I created a second page with details about the NA and fiscal calendar and what date they have and what are their period start and end dates. So this is our regular calendar where you see let's say for 2018 period 1 starts 1 1 1 to 131 2 1 to 2 to 8 so it's a regular calendar right here if you see the fiscal calendar for 2018 you see it starts I'm sorry it starts uh, 1231 2017 and Period 1 ends 127-2018. Let's go back to see if our finding is right. So go back to page 1. Let's add the date into the fiscal table to see what dates the data are from. So adding the date. So if you see uh, yeah, for period 10, we have two dates, 9.29 and 10.1, both belonging to period 10. But here, it basically belongs to period 9. So if you see the 6 million, it belongs to period 9. Here, it belongs to period 10. So coming back to page 2, if you see, we have period 10 starting from 9.29 to 10.26 so we have two dates 9.29 and 10.1 both belonging to period 10 and that's the reason it didn't work here since both the dates belong to period 10 so when you remove the date from here so the data the data is summed up for period 10 and even though that is right it is not comparing uh, correctly against prior year and ideally there should have been a 2019 period 9 row with empty sales and this 4 million should have come here but it, it summed up in both the places which is not right now that we have established that this inbuilt same period last year function doesn't work with the fiscal calendar we have to try and create a new function uh, in a measure that can replicate uh, this uh, same period last year function at the same time 
it should also work with the fiscal calendar. Uh, since the function is little big, I've already created it here. Uh, we can uh, go through this in detail uh, how to uh, create this function. This is the function that is being created. Uh, let's look deep into this function now. Uh, we start off with uh, using the calculate function, calculate sum of sales. This is same as our previous calculation. Uh, and uh, here we used the same period last year, but uh, since that didn't work, we are going to try and create a new filter function. So we we use filter, and uh, the first section we we, we create we, we have to uh, associate with the table. So we get all of fiscal calendar. Uh, the all for all keyword is used because we we want to ignore any other filters or slicers that is applied uh, we just want the entire uh, result set to calculate the prior year so for the table we have this all of fiscal calendar and for the actual filter we are going to say the fiscal year number equals maximum fiscal year number minus one you, you could think that why are we equating the same column but uh, this one works like the left side uh, of the equal sign is, is a variable the right side is the uh, function that uh, evaluates into a value so here for the fiscal year number we want the year number minus one because we want the previous year and uh, the same way we want since we have period number in the table we want uh, fiscal period number as the maximum fiscal period number so we are not going we are not we don't want to change the fiscal period number we just need the same period number but a year prior to it so this is the function uh, that is going to calculate the prior year for us for a fiscal calendar so now uh, let's go back uh, to the table and add this new newly created measure to see how it works so I'm adding it to this table and yes see uh, we got a separate row for uh, 2019 period 9 with 4.4 .4 million for the prior year which is 2018 4.4 million so we got this row and for period 10 we have 9.2 million for 2018 we have this 9.2 million so so this is how uh, you create a function using your uh, fiscal calendar and the columns in the fiscal calendar to create uh, a function that that calculates the prior year uh, correctly without uh, uh, without aggregating multiple dates in the same period uh, as if it is a regular calendar great uh, now we have a working function to calculate the uh, prior year sales for a year and uh, a period uh, using a fiscal calendar uh, but if you come down and see the grand total uh, this is basically uh, the same as 2020 period 12's value and uh, it should have been 118 million uh, this the reason behind this is uh, if you remember we have used the maximum function uh, in our uh, measure calculation so that's basically copying the uh, maximum periods value to the grand total so to fix this issue we have to basically uh, uh, modify the calculation a little bit so let's go back to the measure uh, so uh, if you remember if you see the the table has uh, the lowest granular level at the period level so uh, we have to find out if every row um, of this table has uh, one value for the period so if that is one value uh, it, it signifies that it's it's a table row but if it is not it's a grand total so we are going to say if has one value 
of the fiscal period if yes then we do the calculation else we say calculate sum of the sales so now once we do this and voila it's uh, it's updated now you see the grand total is same as this 180 million but rest of the rows have uh, the correct value that's it folks uh, thanks for watching i hope you could learn something today uh, please subscribe to the channel for uh, more uh, videos like this and post your comments and questions below thank you